Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. My name is Tom. Um, in my other video, I showed how I built this welding table. In this video, I'd like to focus a little bit more on the way that I joined the sides to the legs. Um, you know, out in the internet, whenever you see some type of joint that is not conventional, people tend to name it a Japanese joint or Japanese joinery. I'm not 100% sure that this is Japanese by nature. Um, I've seen it called many different names out there. It's been called a double tongue and groove. It's been called a double half lap joint. It kind of combines um, a lot of different um, joinery techniques. It combines a mortise and tenon with a half lap joint, um, it, but it also uh, has kind of a, a groove system that interlocks with itself. Uh, I'm going to spend the time in this video explaining how I put this joint together and then at the end we'll discuss whether or not it's worth it. We join the project after I've already milled up the stock that is going to be my legs. So it has been jointed and planed to be square in the final dimension. And right now I am using a Forstner bit to basically drill out a stopping point for the mortises that will be cut into the tops of these legs. Once I got those holes uh, drilled, I used my speed square to line up along the edges to draw the lines that will guide me on cutting out most of the waste of the mortises with the bandsaw. is what it looks like after that step. I kind of liked how it looked at the bottom there. Like a domed cathedral ceiling upside down. And finally I just mark out the uh, remainder of the waste that needs to be cut out with the bandsaw uh, to square up the uh, corners of the mortise. And this is the completed leg section with the cross mortises milled into them. I'm doing a test piece with, the, with a piece of material I'm using for the apron. As you can see it's a tight fit. I'm not actually cutting tenons into the apron pieces, I'm just using the uh, full width of the boards. What I am doing is cutting notches into the ends that will interlock with each other and that's the half lap part of this mortise and tenon joint. Here are all of those apron pieces all prepped and ready to be cut out. So the first way to cut out these uh, notches and these apron pieces I'll use my bandsaw. You don't have to use your bandsaw for this. As you can see, I also use my sliding compound miter saw in order to cut the start and stop points of the notch 
And then once I have completed that part, I bring it over to the workbench and just knock out the waste material with a chisel. You can also cut those um, start and end spots with a uh, table saw and a miter gauge, but this was the quickest and easiest way. Now you have to be careful when you're putting these together, as you will see, um, and this is the inherent weakness of this type of joint, at least before you assemble it. Those end pieces are very fragile and they'll break off and it happened a few on a few of them for me and so once I got the joint back together and glued all up everything was fine and this is how it's supposed to go together. So here's a good look at uh, the skirt and I'm just putting the last joint together here. It slides right in nicely. I gotta maybe tap it a little bit with a mallet to get it going, but that's a good fit right there. Okay, next step is attaching the legs to the skirt and um, one of the benefits of this type of joint is you have a lot of glue surface area. And so there I am applying glue on all the surfaces and attaching the legs and checking for squareness. There was a little bit of uh, unsquareness in the legs so all I had to do was attach a piece of scrap wood to the legs to get them squared up while the glue dries. This is my first time doing this type of joinery and so I didn't really go crazy on the quality of the wood it's all scrap wood uh, I this is just a welding table it's a piece of shop furniture nobody's really going to see it besides myself but if you look closely you'll find flaws and it's because this was a learning process for me so here is the completed table base here's some detail on the joint all in all, it turned out really well. It was a lot of fun to build. I think it looks beautiful with the end grain sticking out from the sides of the legs like this. And the nice shadow line with the leg and the skirting. And once I put the tabletop on it, it's going to look like a really good table. So, is this joint worth the trouble? That is the question. It was a little bit more complicated to um, plan out and to cut out. It's definitely a little bit more complex than a, just a standard mortise and tenon. Definitely more complex than using pocket holes. Um, it is definitely a beautiful joint. You have the end of the tenon on this face and then also on this face um, and the wood contrasts nicely and makes a very beautiful joint there's a lot of glue surface area um, because every single one of these faces are are interfacing with glue um, so it makes for a very strong joint um, but it is a very fragile joint um, it, before you get the glue on it so when you're notching out these tenons, it leaves just a small piece of wood left behind and that's on the long grain side and that tends to break off and it did on several of these tenons for myself. At the same time, when you notch out the leg post, you're leaving uh, these very thin pieces of wood that are also prone to breakage, especially when you're dry fitting or just trying to get that fit perfect. So there's a lot of room for failure, there's a lot of room for error in this type of joint, and so the amount of time that it takes to put this type of joint together for a piece of shop furniture probably is not worth it. Now if you want something that has that unique look or looks, you know, just give it that extra touch, this is definitely a, a joint worth pursuing. Especially if you extend these tenons out even farther. I think it would make them stronger and less prone to breakage. 
But go ahead and let me know what you guys think about this style of joinery down in the comments below. Uh, I did have a good time making it, and I learned a lot as I went along. Um, and so I invite you to go ahead and give it a try. Let me know what your experience is. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you like these types of videos, go ahead and subscribe, because I make a lot of them. I usually come out with one or two a week. Thanks for watching up to this point. I appreciate all the comments and the participation I get on my videos. I invite you guys to go out in your shops and go build something, and I'll see you guys next time.